Okay, we got a quorum. I don't know where everybody else is, but. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is the uh, Small Business Committee, and I am Teresa Lohr, uh, Councilwoman from the 2nd District at Large, Chairman of the Committee. Oh, and we have Mr. Taylor joining us now. So I'm going to start uh, to my right, and we'll have the council members introduce themselves. I'm Jermaine Reed. I'm a member of the committee, and I represent the 3rd District. Scott Taylor. Good, good afternoon, or good morning. <laughs> Heather Hall, I'm the 1st District Council Person and Vice Chair of this committee. Well, thank you all for coming this morning. We have a couple of uh, really good presentations. In fact, I think we've hit our year mark as a yes. council because we did this last year. So uh, <laughs> uh, we're kind of com coming around to, we've, we've done this already before. So we're going to have a presentation of Tech Week, and um, which is a very exciting event here in Kansas City. We got to participate uh, a little bit in it last year. Hopefully we'll have more participation this year. Um, and I think think let's see Drew are you doing the the tech week I'm okay. going to, yeah. we have Drew Solomon here to uh, kind of make the presentation and I'll let you take it from here no absolutely thank you uh, members of the council um, appreciate being here appreciate you taking the time to uh, to speak with us about this uh, the gentleman to my right is Mike Hurd uh, also he's one of the co-collaborators on the whole launch KC and tech week initiative with us as well so Mike's gonna Mike's gonna be part of this presentation as well great um, I took the liberty of compiling a handout just so that we could have something that you could walk away with today. Perfect. Uh, and so I'm actually going to work from this. Um, start in the beginning, if you will, I think just as a quick refresher, obviously this will be the second year that Tech Week's in Kansas City. A lot of folks like to ask what Tech Week is in general, so I went ahead and provided this. It's an organization, it's now a public benefit corporation or a B Corp. Uh, it's been in existence now for five years and uh, founded in Chicago. It's now expanded to eight cities nationally. Uh, it's got a national advisory board and then it's got local advisory boards in each of the cities that they represent. Uh, the goal was actually to highlight local communities, bring in national speakers and create, a, uh, create an entrepreneurial and, a, uh, an, in a, and an innovative atmosphere in, in, the cities that they, uh, in the cities that they work in. And as I mentioned, founded in Chicago. Uh, it's originally uh, was created by a group called Guild Capital. Um, mission, really quick, and the vision for Tech Week uh, to create a better world through entrepreneurship, tech entrepreneurship, and supporting the rise of global greats. So if you know anything Probably about... Chicago is now expanded to eight cities nationally. <laughs> All right, wow. somebody's going <laughs> to... Rick Usher. <coughs> he's no, like he's nice out how to work his technology. That was a great, that was a great echo. Mm -hmm. uh, no, absolutely. Um, <laughs> it's national platform. It's essentially major markets where there's opportunity for growing not only technology enterprise, but entrepreneurship outside of Silicon Valley or, you know, the, the kind of the usual places you would see. You can see in 2016 the markets, Detroit, Chicago, Kansas City, New York, Dallas, Los Angeles, and Toronto. And so um, as we move forward in your packet, you will see what was 2015 uh, on page, uh, page four. This is Tech Week by the Numbers. So our inaugural year here in Kansas City last year, we had 5,606 official unique attendees, which was uh, for an event that uh, projected 2,500, we more than doubled, which was great. Uh, we had 3,500 Expo Hall visitors, um, over 250 students at the hiring fair. That number is going to grow significantly this year. We also had 60 participants in the hackathon that took place at the Sprint Accelerator. And so we did have this conversation last year as kind of a wrap up. Uh, year one was an immense success for this market. Uh, we actually were Tech Week's uh, second most productive market in terms of speaker mix, diversity of, uh, of funders and, and opportunity. Um, the other thing I would just as a quick reminder, uh, Jim McKelvey, co-founder of Square, and Jonathan Bedeen, co-founder of Tinder. Uh, we had several other notable speakers that were here last year. Uh, we'll get into some of, the, some of the topics and speakers here in just a moment. Uh, page five is just a high-level calendar uh, to give you an idea. I don't expect you to, um, to understand what all those things are, but I will tell you the 2016 Tech Week uh, has a lot more focus on the early week activities. And so there is a lot more going on on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of the week uh, versus last year. We've expanded uh, not only some of the evening events, but also some of the speakers. And so we're actually going to open on Monday night uh, at the Sprint Accelerator with Brian McClendon, who was the creator of Google Earth and now is the head of product, uh, the mapping products for Uber. So he'll kick us off actually oh, wow. on Monday night with, a, uh, with kind of a fireside one-on-one, -on -one, and then we'll have our, our evening kickoff event. Um, 
the other thing I would tell you, I'd be remiss, you know, the week is essentially Entrepreneur Expo, evening events, uh, sponsor-supported um, sponsor mm -hmm. opportunities. We've also got a summit, which is essentially all of our, our content. We also have the big data portion of this programming, which is going to be fantastic this year. Um, we've actually, the, the program has grown so much that we actually took over a day of the World War I Museum as well to complement Union Station. And so on Wednesday, there will be introductory courses all day for not only professionals, but for students on an introduction to data science all day at the World War I Museum from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. And so we'll have about five or 600 folks probably throughout the day that will attend various sessions over there to kind of help that, uh, help that piece as well, which is great, not only for, for, for youngsters, but also some of the folks who are trying to transition that maybe have some skills, maybe have a degree, but are trying to, to get into an emerging field or something that, uh, something that could be productive for their career. Uh, page six, uh, our headline speaker this year is uh, Jeff Hoffman, who was the founder of Priceline. I think everybody knows and loves yes. Priceline. Um, oh, yeah. You know, one of, the big, one of the big things with Tech Week, it's not only about highlighting what's the, what the great things that are going on here in Kansas City. So you're going to see a lot of local speakers, a lot of local executives. We bring in a few national speakers as well to try to bring folks in that help kind of expand the um, kind of expand our reach with regard to uh, what we do as a city and and kind of how we celebrate a lot of the work that, that members in this community are doing. And so Jeff will be uh, Jeff will be speaking first thing Thursday morning, right after Wendy Gillis, who's the president of the Kaufman Foundation. She is actually going to do the intro and welcome to the conference on uh, Thursday <coughs> morning on the 15th. So. Uh, the final component of Tech Week, I kind of mentioned the four pieces. The final component uh, is arguably the most local uh, component because we, uh, we actually kind of created it and then built it into Tech Week and found a partner, uh, and that's the Launch KC Grant Competition. So just really quickly, for, 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 those, who, for those who know, uh, we've got this program also in its second year, uh, partnered with Tech Week. Actually, Tech Week provides just over $100,000 to the prize pool uh, for this. Wow. So they are very able-bodied. Uh, and committed partners here in Kansas City for that. Um, this competition's in its second year. We give a half a million dollars away to 10 companies in the form of a non-dilutive $50,000 grant. Yeah. We also pair those folks up with mentors, legal aid, and we also give them a free office for a year. And so it's, um, it's an exciting opportunity. Um, this year we had applicants from 19 different states, seven different countries. I think we released our finalist group. I'm going to have Mike talk about this in just a moment, but we had... Um, a healthy amount of folks from uh, from other parts of the country, as well as some really good local candidates as well, which I think is is really important. I kind of before I turn it over to Mike, the the three pieces of the Launch KC grant competition that are really important are kind of the the, the kind of the three tenants, if you will. Number one, uh, it creates exposure for this market. So that competition helps people in the U.S. and around the world understand that Kansas City, one, uh, is a potential destination to start a business, and secondly, it's a place that's encouraging this kind of activity. So that, that's kind of goal one. Goal two uh, is a little more emotional, but um, it's essentially, I think we all know in life sometimes that, you know, it, it can be who you know or, or who you may have access to mm -hmm. that helps a lot of these ventures or things like that get off the ground. One of the reasons that a competition like this is so great is because it's actually what you know and how you perform, not necessarily who you know. And so this is a real, it's a real chance for a lot of folks. I mean, this is, it's pretty hard sometimes to, to find capital or to find oxygen in the world to get, you know, your venture taken seriously. This is, this is a means and a platform to do that. And then the third piece of it, which is also really important, is really priming the pump for real investment or venture capital investment that would happen uh, in the after effect or the follow on. Um, competitions like this provide local investors and national investors a ton of leads and a ton of companies that they can reach out to, work with, and we actually share that information with a lot of local groups after the competition uh, so that they can reach out and potentially see that maybe if a company wasn't a fit for the competition, they may need, they may need some work or some coaching, but they could become a fit down the road. And so um, my last bit before I turn this over, um, on page seven, you'll see some other major content tracks. Um, we're going to have speakers and panels on financial services technology and the new horizons there, ag tech, city innovation, digital media, uh, the future of AI and augmented reality, which is going to be great. Uh, we've got a One Health uh, kind of animal, 
animal and, and life science technology panel that's going to be good. Uh, we're going to have a panel on the sharing economy, which I think is very relevant in Kansas City uh, with regard to um, anything Airbnb or Uber related. I think that's going to be a fantastic panel. Diversity in technology, and we're also going to talk a little bit about the state of investment in the Midwest. Uh, we had a great speaker last year, Anand Sanwal, who's the CEO of CB Insights, came in and provided everybody a wonderful report about the overall health of, of venture investment in the Midwest. Uh, they've agreed to provide that report again this, again this year. So that is the week in a nutshell. It's jam-packed. We have partner events sponsored by the Nerdery, Hush Blackwell, Lead Bank, Sprint Accelerator. Um, I'm probably missing a whole lot of other folks. VML. VML. I mean, we, we have events virtually all, all, all week uh, in, all, in all shapes and forms. And so it's going uh, to be a fantastic deal. I'm going to turn it over to Mike for just a little bit. Okay, to, before you do that, Drew, yep. do you have a comprehensive schedule somewhere? I have a comprehensive schedule. If you go to <coughs> techweek.com backslash Kansas City, I'll be happy to email it to all the, all the please, members of yeah. the committee. You mm -hmm. can actually take a look, and there are still sessions and opportunities being added. I would also mention to you all now okay. that we occasionally find the need for a moderator. Uh, so if anybody would like to potentially moderate a panel, would love to talk to you about being able to do that, um, especially the sharing economy one, mm -hmm. I think would be would be great to have some some policy perspective from a moderation point. I think it would be sure. fantastic. Okay. Yeah, no, we can do right. that. Okay, thank you. Okay. Go ahead. And again, uh, I'm Mike Hurd. I'm with the Downtown Council, and, and along with Drew and my colleague Tommy Wilson, part of the leadership team for Launch KC. So if you want to, you can go ahead and advance in your printed packet to the Launch KC page. And I just want to give you a kind of a very brief update on and on what to expect at Tech Week for Launch KC. Uh, the, most, the, the most pressing piece of news is a very positive one. Mm -hmm. Two weeks from today, Launch KC is, it takes center stage at Tech Week. Um, and, and I'll walk you through that schedule. But basically, on uh, two weeks from today, on Thursday, uh, we'll have uh, our top 100 applicants have been invited to participate in a business expo that day. So each of the entrepreneurs will have the opportunity to take a stand-up table and meet the guests, the attendees at Tech Week, uh, to just tell them about their business vision, look for potential funding partners or even just business partners. Mm -hmm. It's a great interactive exercise. Then the following day, two weeks weeks from tomorrow will be the big showpiece for Launch KC. All morning long we'll have our top 20 finalists presenting. Uh, we'll be in the chamber boardroom so we have a nice enclosed quiet manageable space. Last year we were in the, the big hall and it was it went really well but it was a little more difficult to manage the sound. This time we'll have that as a showpiece and all of the finalists will make their pitches and uh, then in front of the entire audience the judges will ask some questions and then we'll move on to the next uh, finalist and we'll work through all 20 of them during the morning and then take a break and come back at three o'clock in the extreme screen theater and crown the 10 grant recipients for this next year. But to give you a little bit of an update, kind of, we thought it'd be appropriate. The next two pages kind of represent some of the metrics that we're tracking so far on Launch KC. And um, the, what we do is every quarter we're going to measure uh, jobs, average salary paid, payroll, cumulative follow-on funding, cumulative revenue, and then patents that are in process. And um, so this is now, if we gave our grants last year in September, the grant recipients really came on board with us uh, late October, early November, and just getting started here. So even though this represents our first nine months of activity, for many of them it really represents the first six months of actually having their feet on the ground as, as business leaders. Um, and one of the things, and, and this is where I, I really wanted to be really candid with you about this, um, Drew and I represent two organizations that traditionally have not worked a lot in the startup space. I know for me personally, this is my first big venture, my second year into this, of working so much in the startup field. And it's, it's exhilarating, it's awesome, and it's also made me appreciate all new about what a nourishing stage all of these companies are in right now. The work you do with your committee, the work we're doing with this, this is a, a new and very important realm for all of us to be saying, yeah, we want to create a platform where people feel welcomed and supported and nourished to bring their businesses to Kansas City and, and receive help doing it. So these numbers, again, are tracking how we're doing so far. Um, the, and I won't belabor those, but the net increase of seven jobs are 20% in that period of time. 
uh, net salary increase. And this, the salary one's a really interesting one because while the average salary did not change much, one of our comparative pieces of comparative data we use is to look at how the Arch Grants program, our sister program in St. Louis, is working. And these numbers are about fifteen to eighteen thousand dollars higher with salaries than they're doing in. St. Louis. So, and there's, it, it, we can chop up those numbers to explain why, but it's, but it's nice to see the level that the, the quality talent that we're bringing into Kansas City uh, is deemed uh, more, you know, a, a stronger investment based on the dollars we're spending. Uh, payroll, payroll, of course, up on the next page, you get a sense of the cumulative follow-on fun funding. And Drew and I would be quick to tell you, even though we won't report advanced numbers, these numbers have grown a lot since this report was done, but we won't be ready to report those till the end of September. But as you see, uh, cumulative follow-on funding, and the follow-on funding is the amount of support they have received um, since awarding the Launch KC grant. So again, part of that nourishing platform we're bringing them in to help help one, give them more credibility. One thing I'd like to point out on this too, think we give a half a million dollars away. The cumulative right. follow-on investment, $6.3 million, that is an, a greater than an order of magnitude with regard to what the funds that we create, the, the funds that we capture, which are privately raised. We also were the good benefactor of a over $500,000 grant from the state of Missouri's Missouri Technology Corporation and, and our local, you know, municipal and civ civic contributors. It's, you know, 10.8 times what this program invests there is in cumulative follow-on investments. So it's a very, it's a very telling fact. That's exactly right. Uh, just one other point, and then I think I can wrap up with uh, Launch KC for now. Uh, Drew did mention uh, the breakdown of our finalists this year. i tell you a little bit more, add a little more color to that. Um, this was the second year in a row that Launch KC topped its goal for applications. Well, each year we actually do a national search for applicants. Uh, we like to call ourselves, and actually it's proving we are, a global grants competition. Even though we really focusing, focus our marketing voice in, in the U.S., uh, this this year we attracted 414 applicants from 19 states and seven nations, uh, and, the, and actually we were up a couple states over last year. We're about even with nations. And this year's uh, group of finalists include 11 from the bi-state er metropolitan area, seven from other U.S. states, and two international, uh, one from Austria and one from Portugal. And um, we, we don't want to really start uh, trying to pick favorites. <coughs> but one of the more interesting ones is, is one of those products out of Austria that's just breakthrough hardware and software pro product. But we'll... We'll let them speak for themselves next uh, in two weeks. I would weeks. add one other piece of this, too. I think there's been half a dozen or so news releases about the 20 finalists. Uh, it, it's worth pointing out just for all the work that a lot of groups in this town do. We have got almost 50% of the field are women-led founded companies. Right. It, wow. It's close, close to 50%. And so that is a um, – that is one – some of those applicants are local. We've also – um, both of the uh, the international applicants are are, are women led organizations, and so that is a um, that's a big thing for this market. There's a lot of folks from the Central Exchange to the Athena <coughs> League, and, and and there's just a lot of organizations, Women's Capital Connection, that, that work with a lot of uh, of women led firms, and that's a it's a real positive thing for for the community here. Mm -hmm. oh, Councilwoman, thank you. Um, would you be able to share that release with us again for the promotion of that? I think it'd be Absolutely. nice for us to be promoting the reminder to people out there that this is coming up. And by the way, these are the people who are who won this last year. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We re-engage people in the next week or two until this starts. No, absolutely. Um, Thank you. We can definitely do it. I will, uh, any, any other requests, by all means, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll compile everything. The last thing I'll also mention, too, uh, passes. We have passes for, for a wealth of folks in Kansas City. Uh, if you guys would just email me, uh, it's just first name, last name, your email address, mm -hmm. and uh, we will get that taken care of so you all can enjoy the festivities. <laughs> Actually, the passes will come directly to you from Tech Week, so mm -hmm. uh, that's a very, it's, a, it's a good model to use. So when you receive it, they'll give you an opportunity to click to verify that, and then yep. you'll be in their system online. Awesome. So. It's exciting stuff, and I mean, really, to, to summarize this and close up, this is a multi-year approach for us. I think if you remember last year, we talked about Tech Week committed for a minimum of five years to do this in Kansas City. The goal, we exceeded our threshold year one. Year two, our goal is to eclipse 7,500 attendees. Our goal is by year three to get to a 10,000 attendee situation. That, that's where we kind of view the, the threshold or the real, 
real success, if you will, for Kansas City. And so we're, we're going to be continuing to innovate on this model, continuing to build on it. Uh, we're going to try some new things. Not all of them may work. Some of them, you know, most of them probably will. But, um, you know, we're, we're going to really try and, and blow this thing up, if you will, and make it, uh, make it as effective for Kansas City as possible. And so the one, one final piece with that is, is next year, I, I can tell you for 2017, uh, we're going to be starting to work on a speaker honorarium so that we can actually attract more national speakers earlier in the process. Uh, and so we're going to be talking to several groups and organizations that, that are really interested in the content side about raising a pool of funds for speakers so that we can get those top flight speakers into this market and, and really showcase everything that Kansas City has to offer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And can you give us the dates again, Drew, of yeah. the Tech Week? Absolutely. Uh, September, Monday, September 12th through Saturday, September 17th. Um, there is a hackathon supported by Cerner that will take place on Saturday. So technically all the, all the festivities don't end until Saturday. But the meat, the meat of the schedule, just like last year's Thursday and Friday, but there's, there's a whole lot to do Monday through Wednesday as well. Gotcha. Okay. <coughs> Any questions by the committee? Uh, Councilwoman Taylor. Thank you, Chair. <coughs> well, I, uh, thank you for the presentation, and it's an exciting week. It was a, a great event last year. Uh, I want to go back because I didn't hear you mention this, but I think it's important to mention on slide three, uh, just putting Kansas City in the context of other cities mm -hmm. with the, the interest in, in Tech Week here. Uh, we have uh, uh, 7,000 for 2016. Um, and, and that's attendance. I'm assuming it doesn't that's, say that, that's, that's our that's our minimum goal for 2016. Right okay. Now. And so for uh, uh, Detroit, 2,500. New York City's below Kansas City at 6,000. Dallas is at 6,000. Los Angeles is at 5,000. Toronto's at 3,000. Chicago's above us, but uh, Miami's by uh, invite only, smaller number. But it's kind of interesting that uh, to me that we are at the basically at the top. Um, of this uh, list of other much larger cities. It, it really shows our enthusiasm for mm -hmm. Tech Week and uh, all things tech. And so I, I think it also says a lot about the uh, interest and, and all the groups that have worked together on this to really uh, uh, get people involved in uh, this week. And uh, Absolutely. Uh, I would also, before we go, I'd be remiss to not mention that there are dozens upon dozens of people in this community that work on this, that help plan it, that help organize various things um, sure. from members of the Chamber of Commerce, members of the universities around town, private corporations who donate not only dollars but time. Uh, it, is, it is a huge undertaking here in Kansas City. The gentlemen behind me are also very instrumental. They help cover all of this. They also help, uh, you know, put some panels and things like that together as well. And so it's, um, it's an opportunity for Kansas City to collaborate on something. Uh, and, you know, it's, uh, you know we're, we're kind of learning as we go. And the good news is the returns uh, seem to be pretty fruitful thus far. Yeah. That's good.